Good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. How you doing? How you doing? Listen, um, for those of you that may not know me, I know this is kind of a shock, <laughs> but my name is Pastor Desmond Peacock Sr., and I am uh, the lead pastor of the Excelling Church Georgia campus, and I am here on behalf of my spiritual parents, Pastor Terrence Nolan and Pastor Latrilla Nolan. In their absence, they asked if I could cover down and teach Bible study tonight, and I am excited because I'm home, y'all. I am home, I'm home, I'm home. Yes, I am home. So when Pastor Latrilla called me and asked, I was elated is an understatement, y'all. It is an understatement because I am home and uh, just getting myself prepared and ready, getting in the vehicle and driving up here from Columbus. It was nostalgic to think and remember the times I would drive up here with my family to be fed the word of God. And I am so happy to be home. And I got to kind of put out there, y'all, I love the decorations, y'all. I love the upgrades here. It is amazing. Y'all are doing an amazing job. And I thank God. I thank God. I see the growth. I just see them, uh, I see it and I love it. So I'm so sorry if I'm a little, you know, if I'm blushing because I'm home and I, you know, I would love, I, I just, I just love it. I love it, y'all. I love it. So thank y'all so much. But before we jump right into what God has given me to uh, discuss and teach tonight, I would love us to open up in prayer. Amen. Amen. So if all hearts and minds are clear, Father, in the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, we thank you, we love you, we adore you. Father, I thank you for another opportunity that you've given us to come together in fellowship, come together as the body of Christ to sharpen iron, Father, because you said in your word, iron sharpens iron. And so, Father, I just thank you for one, you woke us up this morning. Thank you, Father, for bringing us through another week in the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ. And, Father, we thank you for continuing to cover the lead pastors here, Pastor Terrence Nolan and Pastor Latrilla Nolan, in their absence, Father. I ask, Lord God, that you empower them. I ask, Lord God, that you pour into them, Father God, rejuvenate, re-energize, and bring them back safely at the appointed time and hour. And all these things we ask, believe, and pray. And I pray, Father, that as I decrease tonight, that you increase in me. I don't want to speak a word unless it has been approved and uttered by the Holy Spirit. I pray that shackles are broken, yokes are broken. I pray, Lord God, that walls, walls, the boundary walls that have been blocking people and their purpose and you begin to crumble tonight. And Father, I pray for everyone that is online right now that you meet them where they are. And these things we ask, believe, accept, and we are excited in your precious name. And in your son's name we pray. And God's people say, amen. Amen, 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 amen. So as I was uh, in study and prayer and I asked God and I said, okay, God, what would you like for me to come here and talk about and, and have a discussion and open up about and teach for this moment and for this time frame? And God brought me to a scripture, y'all. He brought me to a scripture. And so if you all have your Bibles, because I'm going to jump right into this thing tonight, y'all, because I, I, I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of discussion. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a lot of discussion, a lot of feedback. And so um, for those of you that have never, uh, I guess, have never been uh, had the privilege of knowing how I teach Bible study, um, it's a discussion for me. Amen. Um, I, will, I love feedback. I love participation. Um, I don't believe in dictatorship. I don't believe in, you know, I just say everything. You write a note and you leave. I want to ensure that, God, we both learn. We both soak in information. Amen. And we leave with substance. Amen. amen. So uh, tonight, 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 tonight is going to be an amazing midweek discussion. Our topic for tonight, our topic for tonight is I want you to look at your neighbor next to you, those of you online, look at your space partner next to you, and say, neighbor, the topic for tonight is just the right ingredient. Just the right ingredient. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. So before we jump into the scripture, I want to give you a quick background of 
the, of leading into our text. Amen. So this was during the time of Jesus and his ministry. Right. There were there was a multitude of people that gathered and, and, and they was around him. They began to he began to talk to them, the multitude about the Beatitudes. Anybody understand, know the Beatitudes, recognize the Beatitudes, familiar with them? Amen. That's that's the blessed are those that blessed are those that. Amen. And so Jesus, as he continued to talk about the blessings, he described who we are in the earth. He described that, and so that's where we are, and that's the focal for our text this, this, this evening. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. I'm going to read it in the New King James Version and the message text. So it's Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. I'm going to read it in the New King James Version first, amen? And it reads, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. I'm going to read that in the message text. Amen. So in the message text, it says, I like how the message text breaks it down. I like it. It says, let me tell you why you are here. Amen. In the message text, Matthew chapter 5 and 13 in the message, it says, you're here to be the salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Crazy, isn't it? It's crazy how the message text breaks that thing down. Crazy. So I read both, and um, and like I told, I told Deacon Carlos earlier, and uh, before we started, and I, I, I try, I try to sit down, but there's gonna be times where I just can't stay seated. So if I jump up, don't be shocked, don't be alarmed. It's just me. I, when I get excited about the Word of God and I feel God moving, I just can't sit still. Amen. So we're going we're gonna to break this scripture down tonight, all right? So we're going to back to the top of verse 13, and it says, uh, it says, you are the salt of the earth. In the New King James Version, that's how it starts. It says, you are the salt of the earth. So when I thought about that, the first thing that came to my mind was, why salt? Why would God compare us to salt? Why would God, why, could, why couldn't we be gold or platinum? Why couldn't he say we're the platinum of the earth or we're the gold of the earth? Why couldn't we be something worth, worth extreme value? Why would he compare us to salt? Why, why would he compare us to something that, check this out, he would describe us as little tiny specks of stuff <laughs> that you can get anywhere, right? Right? And when you don't want it anymore, you can just dispose of it. Think about it. We can get salt anywhere now. Right? We can get salt anywhere. God describes us as salt. So I'm going to open it up to everyone here tonight and those of us online. Why, would, why do you think God describes us? Jesus at that moment said that we are the salt of the earth. Why is salt? Anybody? Okay, I'm just going to venture out to say salt is a seasoning. Uh-huh. And it's um, pretty much every recipe you have, if you look at it, a lot of it has salt in it, mm -hmm. even if it's sweet. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, that's basically mm -hmm. it, that, that we're the salt of the earth. I mean, so he's saying something. And then, too, back in the, his day, salt was precious. Everybody didn't see. We're used to salt. Mm. Back in the day, they didn't have salt. It was something considered um, maybe only a rich guy or whatever, even if they had it. So mm -hmm. that's another thing. Amen. Amen. Okay. Y'all on it tonight. Yeah, I will piggyback on that and saying also that salt is an enhancer. Mm. Because, wow. like she says, even though you use it in something sweet, yes. it's that one thing that kind of makes the recipe wow. Wow. what it is. So. Yes, yes. And also, you know, it's, it also adds, like, you know, it's, if something is dull or plain, you know what I mean? It gives it that, mm, that, that zest, mm. So, like, when you taste that salt, you know, yeah, I, I add it to that. Right. So, you know what right. I mean? We adding, too. 
Right. Everybody right. everybody adds too. I love it. Y'all on it tonight, boy. I'm getting excited. I'm trying. I'm trying to stay seated. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to stay seated. So so what I had to do, and I'm gonna tell you, every answer that y'all gave is right on the money. It's right on the money. So I had to look up the significance of Saul. The first thing that blew my mind was back in the Roman times, it was used as currency. That's where the origin of the word salary comes from. It comes from salt. So in Rome, back in Roman times, they used this as currency. So I said, whoa, okay, okay. I, I, I can get why it was stated at that moment because like you said, Minister Johnsy, it was valuable. Back then, it was valuable, amen? Um, so, and then I looked it up, and salt is also a valuable, I'm sorry, my, my tongue twisting word, valuable mineral. Salt is a valuable mineral. So what are you saying, Pastor Des? Contrary to what you may believe or people tell you, men and women of God, you're valuable. Contrary to what people are telling you or what you may believe, check this out. You're worth something. You're worth something. Contrary to what people may say or you may even think about yourself, you're worth something. And you're somebody that was is rich in value and rich in substance needs you. So it can that you can it, it's amazing when God breaks when you start to look up salt. I had no clue. Salary was the was salt was the root word of salary, and this was a currency. This is this is how people were getting paid back in the Roman times. This is how they were trading salt. <laughs> it's the same salt we pick up in Walmart. This is this used to be that valuable, and then it's a valuable mineral. So it's like men and women of God, we're valuable. We're valuable. Right where you are, you're valuable. Right in your state of being, you're valuable. I'm talking about, guess what? You don't have, but you got negative in your bank account. You're valuable. You got $200 in your bank account until the next pay period, which is two weeks from now. Guess what? You're valuable. You're living in Section 8 housing. Guess what? Men and women of God, you're valuable. You are valuable where you are. Where you are. And think about this. If you go into everybody's house... There's two things I truly believe, and, and if I'm lying, say, all right, Pastor Des, you're lying because it's not my house. You go in anybody's house, there's two things they have in their house. Two things, okay? I'm not going to say hot sauce, even though that's a commodity. <laughs> but I'm not going to say hot sauce. But I'm going to say there's two things that you see in each house, and it doesn't matter if you're living in a multi-million dollar home, or you're living in an apartment or a lower class area, you got salt and you got pepper. We realize it's valuable. We realize that we need it on something in order to enhance the taste. You need it. But what if I told you in order for salt to become salt, it has to go through a process? Hear me. In order for salt to become salt, it has to go through a process. So I looked up this process. Now, check this out. Okay, I, I, I got to get up. Because when I start talking about this process, it's going to blow your mind. The process includes, you ready for this? You can go ahead and, you can go ahead and zoom in out, D. Trust me. Trust me, because I'm about to jump up in a second. Lord have mercy. The process includes weathering. Weathering. That's one. You ready for the next one? Volcanic activity. It goes through a process. Sorry, Pop. I'm going to have to move this chair to the back. Sorry, Pop. I love you, Pastor Terrence Nolan. I love you, Mom, Pastor Latrilla Nolan. I love you. I love you, but I'm, I'm getting excited about God. I'm getting excited already. To be, to be the salt of the earth, right, you've got to go through a process, and for some of that, some of us, it's going to be a series of processes. It's going to be a series. 
But the process is necessary. Yes. It's necessary. Yes. In order for salt to become salt, it has to go through a weathering process. It has to go through extreme heat. It has to go through a volcanic. I don't know about y'all. I've never been close to a volcano, but I've researched the heat of a volcano. And I know when it erupts, you don't want to be nowhere near a volcano. But it goes through volcanic activity. It's necessary. You ready for this? Because what you are called to do will need for you to have understood, endured, and function through things compared to the process you went through. I know there's a lot of words I just said. Let me repeat it. <laughs> Let me repeat it. It's necessary for you to go through. The process is necessary because what you are called to do, it's going to need for you to have already understood, endured, and function through things compared to the process you went through. So what are you saying, Pastor Des? The process is necessary because what you've been called to be, which is the salt of the earth, is going to be, you're going to have to understand what you've gone through in order to help others to go through the same process. Because you have to then tell people that, guess what? You're the salt of the earth. And in order to be the salt of the earth, you're going to have to go through some things that's going to be uncomfortable. In order to be the salt of the earth, in order to be this, this, this specific valuable mineral that is worth value, you've got to go through some stuff. And the stuff you go through, you may not like. You may not like, but you have to endure it because it's what you're called to be. So what are you saying? You're constantly, you may be constantly asking yourself, God, why am I here? Why am I going through this? You know, God, why are they saying such and such about me? Mm -hmm. Or God, why are they lying mm -hmm. on me? Or uh, God, why, why, why is it it seems like I take one step forward mm -hmm. and then I'm taking two or three steps back? Have we ever said that? Yeah. You take one step forward, mm -hmm. then you take two or three steps back, mm -hmm. or you think things is working out for you, and then, you know, something hits that the unknown happens or you know how how about I take how about I go back in time about two years how about the pandemic you we, we were good and then all of a sudden the pandemic hit and next thing you know all of us was in our homes locked in locked out trying to rethink and re reestablish a norm but men and women of God what if I told you that was our process we had to go through a process and, some of, and for some of us, the process was a volcanic activity. It was real hot. It, it, it was uncomfortable. It was things you couldn't explain. It, it, you went through a weathering process. You went through the storm. You went through a tornado. You went through a tsunami. You went through, you went through, the, 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 you, we went through, I, okay, let me, let me refrain. <laughs> the weather today is just annoying. It's annoying. I'm sorry. It's we going. We're going through a bipolar season, to where it, it it wants to rain, then it wants to be hot, then one day it was eighty. It was ninety something degrees outside, but it felt that it was. It felt like eighty something because we was getting a cool breeze. Then today it's not. It was ninety six, but it felt like a hundred and two. And I'm sitting like God. Why is the weather so bipolar? He son, son, you going through a process. The salt of the earth has to go through a process. And, and you got to endure being uncomfortable. You've got to un endure the unknown. But once you make it through this process, then you'll have the opportunity and you'll have the, encur the courage to begin to then speak life into others going through the same process to become the salt of the earth. But check out what salt does. What else does salt does? Now, this crazy thing. Somebody said it earlier. Salt preserves. It preserves. Now check out how salt preserves. Did you know it keeps food from spoiling? This blew my mind. This blew my mind, right? Because I had to research this thing. And when the disciples would fish, they didn't have refrigeration. When they were fish, they didn't, they, they didn't have freezers. They, they didn't have coolers to throw the fish in, right? 
So the fish would quickly spoil. So if they didn't cook it immediately after they fished for it, it would spoil. But once salted, the fish could be safely stored and then used later when needed. So they would use salt to preserve the fish from spoiling. Have, has anybody ever tried to put salt on raw fish to see if it doesn't spoil? Yeah, let me know if it works, because I ain't tried it yet. But it's amazing to know that, wow, you mean to tell me if what man created goes down, there's still a way from God's creation that I can still preserve food and be healthy? And God says we are the salt. So what are you saying, Pastor Des? You ready for this one? We are to preserve. We are to preserve. What do you mean by pass? What do you mean by preserving, Pastor Des? We are to stop the moral decay of sin that has infected our world. Hear me. Sin is spoiling our world. So us, men and women of God, being the salt of the earth. We are to preserve and stop the moral decay of sin in this world. It's amazing how we, I, I'm, we're getting all of this from one scripture. Just the first line, we are the salt of the earth. See, as Christians, as salt, we are to inhibit sin's power to destroy lives. So what that means, I mean prohibit, not inhibit, Jesus. We are to prohibit sin's power to destroy lives. This will then create the opportunity for the gospel to be proclaimed and received. Because we are the ones to preserve it. Now, the amazing thing I love about us being salt is the way I help or the way I preserve may not be the way you preserve. God has chosen you to be that specific salt to preserve in the way he's created you to preserve. Because the crazy thing about it is, I don't know about you, but salt to me is like um, snowflakes. There's not one speck of salt that looks the same. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever researched when salt is actually created? Not one speck of salt looks the same. Just like snowflakes. Not one snowflake looks the same under a microscope. But it has value. It has value. So isn't it amazing now God is calling us to be the salt of the earth? Just off of understanding what salt does. Just understanding how valuable you are. Because it's because uh, I'm not going to lie. Like, I've, I've had to ask God these questions. And, and trust me, I'm 42 Ninety, eighty-one, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm telling you, I, <laughs> dates and age, I'm not good. Trust me. Forty-two. I'm forty-two years old, right? So I, I have to ask these questions. You know, when I when I when I'm when I'm studying, I have to ask questions. God, why 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 are you comparing us to sheep? Why are you comparing us to salt? Like when, when there's so much other, when there's so many other animals in this world that are ferocious, that are intimidating, you know, there are so many other foods that, that makes more sense. There's so many other things, items of value that makes more sense. And the crazy thing I love about how God began to explain it to me was it's not about your size. It's never been about your size. It's been about it's it's been about the the the, partic the the specifics of why I've chosen you to be salt, and it's something else that God compares faith to that's very small. A mustard seed. But a mustard seed can grow into the, one of the strongest trees ever. A small mustard seed. So a speck of a speck of salt can preserve. Now, 
But we're not done with the scripture. We're not done with the scripture. Because, you know, it's, it's good to call us a certain thing and tell us who we are. But now he gives us warning. You ready for this one? You ready for this one? In the New King James, we, we, st- we still there. In, Math- in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 in New King James, it says, But if the salt loses its flavor... How shall it be seasoned? We're going to stop right there. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? Now, I'm going to open this back up. So what do you think at that moment Jesus is talking about when he says, but if the salt loses its flavor? What do you think he means by flavor? What do you think? If the salt loses who he is and where it comes from. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then Mama, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. You want it. You want it. There it try okay, let me let me let me put this out real quick. There is no wrong answer <laughs> here tonight. There's no wrong answer. Cause trust and believe every one of us is on the ballpark. If you if if you spent an hour with God if you literally just got saved two minutes before you walked in here, there's no wrong answer. And if you're not saved and you want to know God, there is no wrong answer. Here's the place where you be, where we're getting taught. Here's the place where we're sharpening each other's iron. This is, the, this is how we huddle. So trust and believe. Don't be shy. Because trust and believe. <laughs> you can tell, you can let my, my partners know I will call on you in a heartbeat. Because this is how we do it. I love it. So, yes, you're right. Absolutely. Anybody else? I was going to say, um, for me, two, two things, if I may. Uh, if, if the salt loose, it's zest, mm, it's thirst. Right. You know, so it's hunger. Right. So, um, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and I would um, basically say that if the salt loses its ability mm. to do what it is called to do, mm. which is season whatever it's added to. <laughs> Y'all, y'all helping this. Y'all in my notes. And don't even know it. Y'all in my notes. You got one, Deacon Carlos? I think, um, like, you, uh, like you said before in the beginning, like when you lose your identity, then that's when you feel like you lose your self-worth. Mm. So I wow. think when you lose your identity, you know, like who you are, who you belong to. Right. That's when you, that's when you be like, well, I'm nothing, I'm this, mm. I'm that. Because you've forgotten who you are and who you are, who you right. belong to. Right. So I think, yeah, about losing your identity, forgetting who you are and where I you came it. from. I love it. I love it. Y'all are all right. <laughs> Y'all are correct and on the money. Character. Your character. Who you are. Now, check this out now. You ready for this? What I mean by character is is not always... Okay, you're a man of God, but you're stepping out of the will of God. Or you're a woman of God, you're stepping out the will of God. Or you're sinning, and you know you're sinning, and you're stepping out. I, I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm not going to be that easy tonight. You ready? I'm not going to be that easy. Character is, guess what? I'm saved. I love God. I, I'm, I'm doing what I need to do. I'm walking that narrow line that hard, narrow line, but I love the way Pastor Des talks about God. So I want to start and to begin to mimic what Pastor Des is doing. Instead of being the man that God has created me to be, I want to be like Pastor Terrence Nolan. I just love the way he talks about God. I love the way he preaches. I love the way he teaches. I, I love the I want to do what Pastor Terrence Nolan does but God says that's not your character I didn't create you that way prime example I was here when when I when I when I was still here learning and still here being poured into and y'all know me I used to come here every Sunday I had the blazers I used to wear the blazers and the button down shirts and the and the jeans and the shoes and and that was me that was the blazers right I loved it to a certain extent 
Then it's starting to get hot and uncomfortable. Because, you know, I had, we had babies back then. You know, I, I, I would hold a baby and I would get hot, right? And so it got to the point where I had to sit down with my spiritual dad. And I had to say, okay, Pop, listen. I cannot wear this stuff no more. I love the way it looks, but I can't. I, I can't. And I thought that that was the way I had to look in order to walk in God's house and be accepted. Hear me. I thought that was the way I had to look. Mm -hmm. I had to wear, I had to wear something that had a jacket that had there was a button-down shirt that the slacks had to be, they had they couldn't be distressed. They had to look a certain way. The shoes had to look a certain way. And I had to stand up a certain way. And I had to worship a certain way. And God began to deal with me more and more and more to the point where he made it uncomfortable for me when I was in church. Mm -hmm. He made it uncomfortable for me when I was in service to the point where I wanted to worship, but I was uncomfortable in how, what I had on. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to wear it anymore. So, but I know that in order f to ensure that I'm hearing from God, I went and had pastoral counsel. Mm -hmm. And I sat down with my pastor. I sat down with my spiritual dad. And I, had the, I, I talked about it. And I said, Dad, I, can, can I wear jeans and a T-shirt and some sneakers? to come in here and he looked at me and he said son you know you can do that that's not what it's about my pop told me he said it's not about what you have on it's about your heart see and he told me he gave me the strip he told me the scripture right then and there in that office he said son he said man looks on the outward appearance but God looks at the heart so he said son you better he said don't wear that again if you don't feel comfortable in it, don't wear it. I want you to be comfortable. And from that point on, I began to, I began to dress down. Now, mind you, there are times I'll dress up, you know, when the time comes, I'll dress up. But from that point on, I realized that I was trying to be somebody God didn't create me to be. And I was losing my character. And when losing my character, then I begin to contaminate my family because I'm trying to be somebody that I'm not. So that's the hard part for us as men and women of God. When we are growing in God, we see so many people be a certain way, talk a certain way, and we feel as though in order for God to hear me or in order for me to be accepted or in order for the pastor to see me, I've got to sound or look a certain way. And I'm coming to tell you tonight that God created you to be a specific type of salt. <laughs> and, and you're not going to be able to preserve or be valuable trying to look like that speck of salt. Amen. So for in this character, the next thing is your relationship with God. Your relationship with God. There's no way in the world you can, you, you can be salt and have flavor without the one that created you to be the one. Be the, and have the flavor. So if you don't have a relationship with the creator that made you the start of the earth, how are you going to be flavorful? So you've got to have that relationship with God. And then, you ready for this one? Our connection. The Bible says we are the fellowship. How do you know how powerful and valuable you can be unless you hang around other salts of the earth that are valuable, that know how valuable you are, how powerful you are? How, how much of a preserver you can be, your connection. So those are the main three. And then, obviously, we've already noticed, when you don't keep your flesh in check. When you don't keep your flesh in check. And it, it, and it ain't just, it ain't just the, the, the flesh that, that everybody talks about, but no, it's the flesh of your mind. How are you thinking? What are you speaking? It, it, it ain't just the bodily contact flesh we're talking about. No, no, God looks at the heart. And the Bible says, so a man think if so is he. So how are you thinking? If you're thinking a certain way that's not, that's not in the will of God, guess what? You lose your flavor. And guess what I found out about salt? You ready for this, bro? <laughs> you ready for this? When salt gets contaminated, it becomes corrosive and poisonous. stage ain't big enough I'm about to run it becomes <laughs> poisonous poisonous it, cor it, it it's corrosive 
So how can we get contaminated? How can we get contaminated? How can we become corrosive and contaminated? One, are you ready? Oh, she picked up that mic. Please, mama. Yes. Yes. How can we get contaminated? If we sit too long without doing what we're called to do, if we sit too long without in, encouraging and inspiring others. My God. My God. My God. <laughs> Keep, anybody else? That's power. That, I'm telling you, y'all, y'all on the money tonight. Anybody else? Um, I think also um, when you don't give God the time that he deserves. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anybody else? One more. Uh, yeah. Uh, when we don't put more fuel back on us. Ooh. You know, so we can become corrosive that way. Got you. Got you. I'm sorry, Pastor Des, but we have, uh, I think we have one comment on yes. Facebook as well. We have, I think this went back to when you were asking about um, how to, how we lo- lose our seasoning. Mm-hmm. Um, Sister Kenethia said, if you lose your seasoning, once you repent, God will renew you. Mm, mm, I like that. And I then like she that. just said, it's a heart condition. Wow. Wow. Now, y'all ready for this one? Because I had to do some deep research, and I even had to look to make sure before I say this. You know table salt has an expiration date? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but check this out. I just read it. It may no longer possess a good flavor, mm-hmm. but it's still safe for consumption. So what are you saying, Pastor Des? Mm-hmm. If you're not if you're not out there doing what God has called you to do mm-hmm. as a man or woman of God, mm-hmm. and you sit like you said, Mama, mm-hmm. you expire. Mm-hmm. But the crazy thing about it is, people can still come to you mm-hmm. and be trying to and trying to understand what God is all about, and and you're sitting there, and if you're not a the body of Christ getting fueled, like you said, Mother Mary, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, you can be speaking about God, but it has no power. It has no power. So what that means is they're consuming what you're saying, but it has no flavor. It has no flavor. So and, 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 and what if I told you that's one of that's one of the challenges in the body of Christ? We have a lot of expired salt. They've lost their flavor because of whatever they've gone through, and they've allowed themselves to sit stagnant and not grow. And when they sit stagnant and not grow, guess what ends up happening, Deacon Carlos? You ready for this? Somebody that doesn't know God and decides that they want to go to this particular person and talk about God, there is no motivation with this salt when they talk about God to the individual that is inquiring about God. So what are you saying, Pastor Des? Let, let, me, kind of, let me kind of filter this thing for a second. Y- y- y'all are at work, right? And God comes up in a conversation. And let's just say you got the stale salt. You have someone who is wanting to know about God, and then you have somebody that's just observing the conversation. Yeah. You are the observers, right? And you got the stale salt right here, and this person wants to know about God and say, hey, you go to church, right? The stale salt says yes. So how do you, how, how do you like church? What is, what, tell me something about church. Well, I mean, it's good. And I mean, I go to I, I go to church on Sundays, and you know the pastor preaches, and you know I get a good word in, you know, and 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 I, and I tithe, you know, you know, but you know it's just it, it's it's changing a lot. But you should go. Well, well tell me about God. What, how's your relationship with God, girl? I love God, or bro, I love God. You know. I'm struggling, though, <laughs> but I love God, man. You know, it's, I, I, I love him with all my heart, but, you know, times is hard. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling financially. I'm, I'm, you know, but I love God. I love God with all my heart and my soul, but I'm still waiting on this promotion. This promotion ain't happened yet. He 
You see what happens? So you're feeding this individual, but you have no flavor. Because you've expired. You've expired. Uh, you, you, and, and another way you can get contaminated is when you allow the things of this world to become your focus rather than God. When you allow the things of this world to become your focus rather than God. What are you saying, Pastor Des? I, I need to be focused on, 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 on politics. I need to be focused on, on what's happening in the White House. I need to be focused on what's going on in my son and my daughter's school. I need to be focused on what's going on in these communities. I, I need to be focused on, you know, the, the, comp the conspiracy theories. I, I need to be focused on that. Yeah, I'm not saying don't be focused on it, but don't allow that to overshadow your faith in God. Don't allow that to overshadow what God has already called you to be. Don't allow that to overshadow what God has already called you who you are, which is you are, you are more, than, oh, more than an overcomer. And God has already overcome this world, so why are you afraid of what's going on in this world? One, you allow things of this world to become your focus. Two, you ready for this one? I'm about to be in somebody's house tonight. When we compromise our relationship with God to please man, have that much time tonight but when you compromise your relationship with God to please man now we already know that compromise I'm not gonna get into that we got children in the house I'm not gonna talk about that one but I'm gonna talk about something simple as your boss wants you to do something that you know is immoral and unethical but he or she wants you to do it anyway and you're afraid that if you don't do it you're gonna get fired you're afraid if you don't do it, then you won't get looked at for that promotion that's coming in six months. So you do it anyway. God knows my heart. He knows I'm trying to get this promotion. And God put me in this position, to, and he tested me, but he knows my heart. So I'm going to do, do it right now, then I'm going to get back. I'm going to do this right quick, then I'm going to get right back, God. I'm going to do this right quick, then I'm going to get right back. Or, or um, I, 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 it's funny because I, I'm, and I'll say it, I'm a, I'm, I'm a part of a fraternity. Right? One of the divine nine fraternities. Phi Beta Sigma. Right? I'm a part of that fraternity. But there are some things I just can't do. I'm going to be completely honest. I, I cannot do it. Because my calling in God and my relationship with God, I cannot compromise that. I can't. I, I just can't. Like, for example, we have our chapter meetings on Sundays at 3 o'clock. I done told them, hey, brother, 3 o'clock. I'm either shutting down the church or I'm shutting down physically because we had church. I can't do it. I have to understand what's more important. And I know that if I compromise my relationship with God to please man, then what's going to happen when I need God? Because ain't, there hasn't been one thing that has happened in my life when I've been at a bad place in my life where man was the one that helped me. It was God, the one that brought me through. It was God, the one that brought me through. And, 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 that, and that's just, just who I am. Now, a, a, am I walking away from No, I'm not walking away from the fraternity, but there's just certain things I can't do. And they just going to have to deal with it. I, and that's just what it is. But I'm not going to be somewhere to please, man, I can't do it. Because guess what, brother? I did it before. I compromised my relationship with God before to please man, and I see where it got me. Nowhere. Fast. And my salt was contaminated. Ready for the next one? Because all those things we talked about, that's exactly what Satan wants. He wants you to be contaminated. He wants you to lose your luster. He wants you to lose your flavor. Because once you lose all that, guess what ends up happening? You lose your power. You lose your power. We are in such turmoil in the body of Christ simply because a lot of us have just lost our power. We've lost and, and, and forgotten how valuable we are and something as simple as salt. Now, watch what it says. We're going to continue. Same verse, but at the end. It says, it is then good for nothing but to be thrown out 
and trampled underfoot by men. Now, in the message text, the message text broke it down even so disrespectful. It sat there and said, you've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. That's what it says in the message text. You lost your youthfulness and will end up in the garbage. But Satan wants you to become useful as garbage. He wants you to become useful as garbage. Because you ready for this one? Because I'm making him a liar tonight. Because he knows he's useful as garbage. He knows he's useful as garbage. What are the characteristics? What's the characteristics of garbage? It's nasty. It stinks. It's dirty. But he knows there are certain people that like to dig through it and get treasure from garbage. So he makes certain things tantalizing and enticing to the eyes of the individuals that like to dig through garbage. Hear me tonight. <laughs> Satan wants your godly purpose to become poison so that way you can begin to poison others. Therefore, leaving a poison trail of contamination. What are you saying, Pastor Des? There are some ministers that are on pulpits right now, expired salt, and they're contaminating the congregation. There are leaders in the congregation. The, 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 the minister, the pastor, is not expired salt, and he's pouring as much as he or she can, but there are leaders in the congregation that are expired salt, and they contaminate the congregation. Listen to me clearly. There are people in the congregation that are expired salt, and they contaminate the congregation. They contaminate. That's why we have the negative side of what we call cliques, the negative, the contaminated salt carriers. For whatever they've gone through, whatever experience they had in church, now they're contaminated. But instead of dealing with how they got contaminated, they would like to contaminate others. And this is the mess the enemy loves. He lives for this type of stuff because he says to himself, yep, they're useful garbage. And it's all in the body of Christ. It's all, it's all, in, the, it's all in the church. It's in the building that, that, that we have set aside to be holy, where people that are walking in that's supposed to be unclean, they're supposed to be the unclean ones, the sinners that are walking in to get clean. But how can sinners walk in to get clean when the people are already contaminated and corrosive in the building? But we set this to this building aside to be holy, fertile ground for God to walk in and sit in. But there are some where Jesus can't even sit in because it's too corroded and it's too poisonous. We are the salt of the earth. And, that, and, and something as simple as thinking negatively, you can become poisonous. Because so a man thinketh, so is he. So you can be sitting there saying, I'm blessed and highly favored. And in the back of your mind, you salty. You salty. Uh, 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 my, one of my mentors, Pastor, Pastor, uh, Pastor um, Tory Martin of Kingdom, Kingdom of God Empowerment Center, he preached a sermon a long time ago, and he actually preached it here. And he said, don't be salty, be the salt. And I took that with me. So well, what, what do you mean by don't be salty? You're complaining. Nothing, you, you just can't find joy because I'm not going to say happiness I'm not going to say happiness because guess what y'all happiness has an expiration date <laughs> happiness has an expiration date and guess what happiness has to be ha happiness has to be ignited by something you can't just wake up happy <laughs> something has to happen for you for you to be happy and it was to the point where my wife, Pastor Jerrica, she would say, when I was in my, in my depressive state, she would say, baby, I just want you to be happy. I just want you to be happy. 
and I get where she was coming from because I was in a depressive state. And then there were times and moments where I would be happy because things would happen for me or I would feel a certain way, but it had an expiration date. But there's something that doesn't has an, does not have an expiration date, and that's joy. That's joy. Joy. What do you mean by that, Pastor Des? It can be a tsunami in my house, but I got the joy of the Lord. I got the joy of the Lord. Things don't look the way I want it to look, but I got the joy of the Lord. I have the, because can't nobody take the joy from me. Because that, that's, that, that's just when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. All I got to do is think about how far I've come. I may not be where I need to be right now, but all if I just sit back and think about how far I've come to this point, I know it was God and God alone that brought me through it. So I got joy. See, many times, men and women of God, we allow what we see through our natural eye to control how our mind and spirit reacts. God is saying, it's time that we begin to repurify our thoughts and actions. We have to start repurifying it. Some of us have to literally go through a spiritual bleaching. We've got to start bleaching some things in our life. We have to literally start going through a, mo a moment of purging and pruning some things. Because what if I told you that you may not be the one that's contaminated, but you're with somebody that's contaminated. You know how the saying, one small apple spoils the bunch? What if I told you that one small speck of salt or a couple specks of salt that's corrosive and poisonous pretty much messes up the entire batch of salt? So you may not even be the one that's messed up, but you're around someone and all they do is complain. <laughs> I heard somebody say, oh, yes. <laughs> Pastor, you talking about me. I know who you talking about. I need, I need to let that person go. I need to let that person go tonight. If you, I'm letting you know, if that person, if, if, you get a, if you get a text message and you got to look at the text and do this number, And it's yeah. <laughs> always something. And it don't matter how much you pour into the person, but they want to call you with something new. Or they want to call you with the same thing. Can 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 you can you pray for me, girl? What you need prayer for, girl? Man, my husband, me and him just having some hard times. What's the hard times about? He just don't understand me, girl. Have y'all communicated? Do y'all understand what communication is all about? Have y'all sat down and really commun- Yeah, we did what you said two weeks ago, but you know, we back at it again. And before you know it, you've lost your luster because you're at a position to where you find yourself overly pouring into this individual and they're not embracing and not taking in and not doing the work. A lot of leaders become corrosive because they pour into their people over and over, and they see some of the people doing the same thing over and over and over to the point where some of them, when they look at the phone, when y'all call them, they like, I already know what they're going to call and talk about. Just, 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 just put it on, do not disturb. Just put it on, don't disturb. But see... I say that to be funny, but I also say that for us to understand that there are times where God wants us to put in the work. There are times where God wants you to be the salt and start preserving your own situation, your own atmosphere. God already give he already gave you the power because what ends up happening is if God knows that you're contaminated, he's not going to send you contaminated. See, God told the disciples, go out into the world, create more disciples, share the gospel, right? But God's not going to send you contaminated. I'm sorry, he's not. So you can be doing all this witnessing in Walmart and Target and all that stuff, and, 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 and you're, there's no power behind what you say because he's not going to send somebody contaminated. God won't send us if we're poisonous. He's not going to send us if we're poisonous. 
Because what ends up happening, men and women of God, when we go out and we know we're poisonous, <laughs> when we go out and we know we're corrosive, what ends up happening is we create more spiritual carnage than we do healing. So what are you saying, Pastor Des? It's a time in our life now where we have to begin to start taking some spiritual accountability. It's okay to say you're not okay. It's okay to get help. It's okay to seek help. It's okay to start working on yourself. It's okay to say, you know what, I'm burnt out and I need a break. I need to breathe because what's the point of serving if I'm doing it grudgingly? What's the point of giving if I'm doing it in the back of my mind, I'm waiting when I'm clocking out? What's the point of coming and smiling fake? What's the point? Because you lose your, you lose your luster. You lose your flavor. You lose it. Amen? Amen? But God has called us to be the purifiers of this earth. And as I close, we are called to bring it back to the place God wants it, this world, and us to be. He's called us to bring, bring us back, take us back to a place where we first was. And I believe that first day was when we gave our lives to God. God wants that zeal to come back. He wants you to think about the day you decided, okay, enough is enough. I can't do this thing called life on my own. And I've seen firsthand what you can do, God, with my families, with my friends around me. And I know that if they can smile through some of the stuff that they're going through, it's got to be a God. And or some of us, it's been a situation that 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 you decided to give your life to God because you've gone through something. You went, you had an accident, a near-death experience, and you know God brought you through it. God wants you to be, he wants you to remember how you felt that moment when you rose your hand and you said, I want to give my life to God, or you walked down that aisle and you said, I want to be saved, or even, guess what, men and women of God, when you rededicated your life. I remember the day I rededicated my life right here in this church, I rededicated my life to God, and I remember how I felt. God wants you to remember that. He doesn't want you to lose your luster, because you know what's so crazy about salt, and I'm done. Salt is tiny specks, but can accomplish and change big things. Sort of like having the faith the size of a mustard seed. Something so small can accomplish something so great. Something so little is needed for survival. Salt is needed for survival. It's needed. And if you don't think it's needed for survival, sweat a lot. Sweat a lot. When they sit there and they tell you your, your, your salt, and I think what they call it, your sodium levels, is too low. Go without salt and see what happens. But if you have too much salt, see what happens. That's the trick. That's the other side to this thing, men and women of God. You can, you can get too much salt at one time. You can embrace and digest too much salt at one time. And it leaves your body and your spirit completely off whack. God is saying, I'm not looking for you to know it all. I'm just looking for your desire to want to grow. Man, I got more stuff, but I got to stop. I got to stop. We can't do this by ourselves. This is the reason why the tiny specks come together and salt comes together. Because I don't know about you, but I put a tiny speck on a piece of food and it didn't taste different. But when I shook it a couple times on that piece of food, then I, then I tasted it. That's the difference between you trying to do this thing by yourself as opposed to the body of Christ doing it together. This is why Satan is so bent on making sure that we are separated in numbers, separated in growth, and we hate each other. Because he knows that if we understand how powerful we can be together, there's nothing he can't, there's nothing he can do to stop and block the progress because we're together. 
And it takes all of us becoming kingdom minded, doing this together, and then watching what God does through us and for his glory. Now, I'm just asking you all tonight to allow God to make you just the right ingredient. Just the right ingredient. Become the salt of the earth. Become the salt. Don't allow yourself to be corroded. And if you are, ask God to purify you once more. And let's go out there and do what God has called us to do. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we love you. We adore you. We praise you. Father, I pray that even now, Lord God, that you are in the atmosphere and you begin to start moving miraculously for your glory. Father, I thank you, Lord, that now we, ha we have an understanding of how valuable we are. We have an understanding of how, how, of how powerful we are. And Lord God, I pray even now that our flavor, our luster, Lord God, does not lack. But we continue to keep the flavor rich, Father, for your glory. And we begin and continue to preserve the things that we are called to preserve in this season and in this year. And Father, I pray again for your people tonight as we leave this place, but never ever from your presence. Guide us, comfort us. And Father, pray for our leaders today, Pastor Terrence Nolan and Pastor Latrilla Nolan. In their absence, Father God, continue to guide them, continue to give them wisdom and pour into them, Father, as they are the example of the salt, Father, here for this ministry. And Lord God, we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. It belongs to you and only you. In Jesus' mighty master's name we pray. And God's people say, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Were we blessed tonight? Were we blessed tonight? Amen. 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 Before I go, before I go, before we end, I would, I would be remiss if I didn't give the opportunity for anyone who may not know God as their Savior, who may not know God as your personal Lord and Savior, those of you online that may not know God as your personal savior or you want to rededicate your life to God today, you want to become that salt. If that's you, if that's you, wherever you are, wherever you are, if you can just join with me and those of us that are in fellowship and we are men and women of God and we have a relationship, join with me tonight as we pray the prayer of salvation, as we can rededicate our lives to God and become that salt. Amen. Amen. So at this moment, just repeat these words after me. Say, Father God. You know my life, and you know how I lived it. I'm a sinner, Father, and I pray, Lord God, that you forgive me of my sins. You said in your word that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that the Lord Jesus died on the cross for my sins, was buried, but rose on the third day, with all power in his hands, I am saved. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Thank you, Father, for creating me to be the salt of the earth. And I vow from this day forward to live for you. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 I believe somebody got rededicated tonight, y'all. Somebody got rededicated tonight. Thank y'all so much for joining us. Uh, once again, this is the Bridge Church of Alabama, where we are loving God, loving people, and pursuing purpose. Amen. I love y'all so much. You are dismissed. Amen. <laughs>